I witnessed, recorded, and produced these videotapes of the Washington, D.C. hearing. Their authenticity is above question. This is a hearing about the government licensing the electrocution of people to cause grand mall seizures. This is produced as part of the ongoing work on the website the way the truth and the life dot net think of the millions of dollars taxpayers money spent to pay psychiatrists and their supporters and for the worldwide travel in putting this conference together while the victims and opponents had to pay their own way The uh, first paper of the afternoon will be the final one of the section on efficacy and clinical education. And uh, it will be on uh, by Dr. by Dr. Bernard Lehrer on the possible mechanisms of action for ECT.
starting with Maduna, they are after selecting a Bini with their modification uh, of electricity. Uh, there was an interest in how the mechanism, mechanism of the street might be displayed. Maduna in 1935 wrote that the effect of the epileptic convulsions is that they change the chemical constituents in the organism in a way suitable for the cure of schizophrenia. Of course, the issue of the cure of schizophrenia is perhaps less relevant today, but the emphasis on changing chemical constituents is one which has intrigued researchers from that time on. A second principle which underlies most, almost all research into the mechanism of action of ECT is that employed by Zalecki and Dini, and that is the belief that it is the induced seizure, no matter how it is induced, which is the important thing to do And that the electricity, the fluorophyll, or whatever other method is used, is of secondary consequence. And most research, particularly that done in animals, and looking at neurochemical changes following ECT, has focused upon changes induced by the seizure per se, in comparison to changes induced by all the other attendant manipulations. Uh, which are part and parcel of the particular experiments. This summary of some of the theories of mechanism of action is of course not comprehensive. There are more. I will attempt to review evidence relating to some of these listed here in the course of the time at my disposal. Uh, psychological and anesthetic theories, under this particular heading, I have subsumed all those theories which relate to either the metapsychological effect or psychodynamic effect of the whole treatment procedure, and anesthetic theories pertain to those theories which relate the therapeutic effect of ECT to its adverse effects on memory. I will not discuss in any detail at all structural theories, since, as I think, will emerge from presentations uh, subsequent to my own. Uh, there is not substantial evidence for structural damage following ECT, at least of a macroscopic nature. And certainly there is not enough evidence upon which to base a theory relating the structural damage to its mechanism. I believe that there are those who would disagree with this position, but then of course there are those who would take a view similar to mine. Neuroendocrine theories I will discuss in a little detail. Neurophysiological theories, under this heading, I've included all those theories which pertain to changes in blood-brain barrier uh, permeability, changes in brain electrical activity, and changes in neurometabolic activity of the brain. And finally, my own particular area of interest, which I will forcibly relegate to the last position, neurochemical actions that might be involved in the mechanism of the treatment. I've summarized on this slide some quotes from various papers which are reviewed in preparation for this talk, pertaining to psychological and anesthetic theories. In essence, there are really two major approaches there, and perhaps in reducing uh, the vast amount of literature to these two major approaches, I am doing something for this service, but uh, time, the time period dictates that I take a particular course. <coughs> A whole series of uh, papers looks at the postulate that the effect of ECT in alleviating particularly depression and possibly other illnesses is related to the punitive effects of the treatment. Whether these punitive effects are realistic or not, the punitive effects of the treatment as perceived by the patient receiving the treatment, and their effect on uh, ego function with as suggested by Prosser and Pastor in 1948, shocking due to weakening of the incremental functions of the ego, progression to the narcissistic state, and subsequent higher reintegration. <coughs> Another series of, of uh, approaches or theories looks at what harnesses the amnestic effect of the treatment, both as is, as well as in a more psychodynamic context. Talking, as did Cameron in 1948, about differential deficits in memories of negatively contested emotional experiences producing a lot of people to not psychological reintegration. <coughs> so Janice in 1950 suggested that retrograde amnesia had a learned defense that allowed the patient to repress painful experiences occurring subsequent to the treatment. 
This is really a very fascinating literature, which I would certainly recommend to all those present. Uh, the question is, to what extent is there experimental evidence to support the particular approaches that I have summarized about? I think there are a number of non-confirmatory pieces of evidence. Firstly, the reduction of the psychologically traumatic aspects of ECT by the use of anesthetic and muscle relaxing modification without any apparent impairment of therapeutic evidence. This certainly takes something of the thought out of a lot of the theories which uh, view the punitive effects of the treatment as being of psychological importance. Secondly, as has been discussed at length this morning, the superior therapeutic efficacy of real versus simulated ECT in most studies. And perhaps a point that has not been sufficiently stressed in spite of the lengthy discussion this morning. And that is, in those depressed patients who are most psychotic and most ill, Thirdly, the equivalent therapeutic efficacy under monitored conditions of unilateral non dominance and bilateral electrode basis, although memory impairment is reduced. Now there is some controversy, as perhaps will emerge in subsequent discussions, as to how effective unilateral treatment is. But there is no question that some degree of efficacy is attached to this treatment. And clearly, uh, this is achieved with a considerable reduction in the memory impairment induced by the Finally, the interesting studies of Otterson in 1960 showing lack of correlation between the degree of memory impairment and antidepressant efficacy, and that the relationship of memory impairment to electric current is related to electric current and the antidepressant action to seizure induction. Time, unfortunately, does not permit to go into the detail of these studies. But, uh, at the FDA hearings, uh, the testimony uh, on the reclassification of electric convulsive devices cited the literature as a, uh, whether signed or false, typically about 150 joules of energy in a treatment uh, with the new Flamtron uh, electroconvulsive device if you check out at uh, uh, 400 volts maximum of 0.9 amps and uh, 320 some millisecond pulses. Could you finish up your question, your remarks? Yeah, I would like somebody to tell me. I brought, I'm a teacher as well as a physicist, and I brought a kilogram with me. Teachers like to demonstrate. Now, this is a, is a kilogram. It's 2.2 .2 pounds, uh, heavier than a hand when I used to hit an amp. But I wonder if uh, possibly like Dr. Stein could tell me how high I would have to drop this kilogram from in order to have it hit the ground with 150 joules of energy. Uh, I, don't <laughs> I don't know if that question is uh, in the trivial panel, but that should be the point. Well, just a minute. I'd like to go on to the next person. I would, this is only 10 joules of energy. You're talking about dropping it from higher than a five-story building. But that's physics. Supposedly in pre-med backgrounds. Thank you. <laughs> I never got it. All right, out with your gum. Huh? Out with your gum. Uh, it just won't hurt. It'll be over in just a moment. Uh huh. What's that? Conductant. Oh, dab will do you. All right, Mr. Jackson. Open your mouth. What's that? This will keep you from biting your tongue. Uh -oh. Now just bite down on it. That's right. Just bite down. Huh? Now bite down on it. Good. <coughs> 